Today we're going to talk about the Soviet Poverty Law Center. I mean, the Southern Poverty Law Center, so-called. Really not uh, much to do with poverty. These people have a half a billion dollars in their endowment. A lot of it hidden uh, offshore. <laughs> Very funny, right? Uh, and it's true. So uh, as you may have heard, if you read the real news, maybe not the fake news, they're kind of trying to avoid this, but uh, the Soviet Poverty Law Center is in some really big trouble. Uh, in fact, they are completely drowning in scandals right now uh, to the point where their future looks very much to be in jeopardy. Uh, the top leadership of this scandal plagued organization has now been fired or has stepped down. Uh, there's lawsuits flying every which way trying to pry loose some of this money. Uh, a full page ad just appeared recently in the Wall Street Journal asking some very serious questions about this organization and actually quoting people from within the SPLC about what goes on there. Uh, the Department of Justice last year with uh, under Attorney General Jeff Sessions formally severed all ties with the Southern Poverty Law Center. Jeff Sessions pointed out how ludicrous it was that they were labeling all these mainstream uh, Christian organizations and uh, organizations that don't approve of LGBT marriage and things like that as hate groups. And so, uh, you know, Jeff Sessions formally severed all the ties between the DOJ and the Southern Poverty Law Center, a major blow to the organization, right? Because that's really what they do is they try to weapon the government against the people they don't like politically. And so to have the DOJ formally call them out and say, we're not going to work with these people anymore because they discriminate against people of faith uh, is just absolutely huge. Uh, some of the more recent news, Twitter, which very much appears to be dying as well, but uh, Twitter has become the first big technology company to formally drop uh, the SPLC. Uh, the SPLC was sitting on their Trust and Safety Council, which was helping them uh, basically decide who to censor. And you'll be not surprised to know it was almost exclusively uh, conservatives, Christians, and things like that. So uh, the Twitter no longer has a relationship with the SPLC, according to news reports, and that is big progress. Uh, of course, the other big technology companies do still have a relationship with the SPLC, or at least have not publicly distanced themselves yet. Uh, that includes Fakebook, which you know seems to be going the way of MySpace very quickly, right, fading into irrelevance. Um, also, Google and YouTube are still working with the SPLC, as far as we know, as is Amazon. Uh, Amazon, the retail giant, uh, one of the biggest companies in the world, uh, we found out was allowing the SPLC to decide which charitable organizations would be allowed to participate in its SMILE program. And it uh, turns out, obviously, they were banning and uh, discriminating against Christians. Why are we not surprised? Uh, we found out now that there are multiple lawsuits flying against the SPLC. Uh, some of them allege very, very serious things like racketeering, like uh, you know, conspiracy, slander, libel, malicious, uh, you know, just nasty stuff that they've been saying. And you know, if you don't know the SPLC, um, basically their purpose in life is a tentacle of the deep state that seems to exist primarily to demonize Christians and conservatives, to try to discredit Christians and conservatives and truthful information that uh, the establishment wants to silence. So what the SPLC does is they'll take, uh, you know, the handful of little real hate groups that still exist in the country, you know, maybe a couple of chapters of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, maybe an American Nazi here and there. And uh, they lump those all together with mainstream Christian organizations like uh, the American Family Association and the Family Research Council and the uh, uh, Alliance Defending Freedom. You know, these organizations represent millions and millions of people. They're very mainstream, uh, but primarily the SPLC targets them for standing fast uh, in the definition of marriage, saying that marriage is between a man and a woman. Uh, basically the same thing that President Obama ran on when he ran for president. And apparently now, according to the SPLC, that makes you a hater, an extremist, a bigot, uh, worthy of the full wrath and fury of the government. But um, what I think is so amazing here is that just in, uh, in recent months, the floor is falling out from under this SPLC. It's actually uh, something incredible to witness. Um, and now uh, in this ad that I mentioned earlier that appeared in the Wall Street Journal, it was um, funded by the American Family Association and the Family Research Council. For those of you who don't know these organizations, they're pretty much just mainstream uh, Christian groups that support uh, the family values and things like that. Uh, but the Family Research Council was actually targeted by a terrorist who was inspired by the SPLC's hate propaganda. 
the FRC got listed as a hate group by the SPLC for supporting marriage. And um, this uh, homosexual activist turned terrorist used the SPLC's hate map, uh, walked into the Freedom or the Family Research Council's offices with a gun, started shooting, uh, was planning to massacre all the employees of the organization, and then stuff Chick-fil-A sandwiches into their faces um, as a kind of uh, a statement about how tolerant the LGBT movement is. And, uh, you know, obviously. So anyway, so this terrorist confessed, uh, got busted, got arrested. Thankfully, the security guard at the FRC subdued the lunatic and uh, he was taken into custody. And he admitted that the SPLC had inspired him to undertake this terrorist attack. So, you know, the SPLC's hateful rhetoric has actually led to uh, terrorist attacks. And, uh, you know, we can expect that more will come if this organization continues. But um, the FRC, partnering with other groups, including the SPLC Exposed, put an ad in the Wall Street Journal. And one of the things they did was they quoted from people who have worked in the SPLC about what's happening. And so uh, Christine Lee, one of the people who was quoted, she worked as an intern at the SPLC. Uh, she said, quote, there was not a single black employee with whom I spoke who was happy to be working there. She said that the organization has a way of talking about black people as jesters that hasn't, I don't think, been done in 30 or 40 years. And so this is supposed to be an anti-racist organization. And we're here we have uh, black people from within the organization saying that the leadership of the organization is racist against black people and mistreats them and talks down to them and uh, it talks about them as if they were jesters in a way that we haven't seen in decades and generations. So, uh, so much for fighting hatred, right? Uh, another former SPLC official, this was a uh, former SPLC attorney, Gloria Brown said, I was surprised at some of the things I saw because it was a civil rights organization. I've heard racial slurs in the place, right? So again, uh, the Poverty Palace, as the SPLC headquarters is known, um, filled with racial hatred, racial discrimination, sexism, misogyny, etc. Uh, another former SPLC employee was quoted in The New Yorker, which, by the way, is a far left uh, publication. You will never step foot in a more contradictory place as long as you live. Uh, another SPLC employee said it could be racial, sexual, financial. That place was a virtual buffet of injustices. Uh, another SPLC writer, Bob Moser, said we were part of the con and we knew it. So there you go, right? This is from SPLC employees. And then finally, they quoted uh, former SPLC senior fellow Mark Potuck, the goober face who uh, really became the subject of national ridicule when he went on CNN and said that more than half of Americans uh, were racist against black people. All right, what a ludicrous thing to say. He admitted that the SPLC's ultimate aim in life was to destroy quote, to destroy these groups, completely destroy them. And so uh, there you have it right from the horse's mouth. Uh, these groups are not monitoring anything. Their goal in life is to destroy people with whom they disagree. And uh, until recently, they've actually been pretty successful in doing that, right? Um, you know, the SPLC makes some asinine remark, and then the Communist News Network and the Washington Compost and the New York Slimes, they all get together and they parrot those things. And they say, uh, you know, such and such person who's affiliated with a hate group, whatever it is, um, and so that's how the SPLC rolls. That's why it's such a crucial component of the deep state, because they were using this organization to demonize anybody that was trying to expose the deep state, anybody fighting back against the agenda of the deep state. But now it seems like the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, in March, the SPLC had to fire its co-founder, Morris Dees, the, uh, the con man. This guy led the group for almost 50 years, and that's even after we found out in court documents that he tried to uh, and was involved in sexually molesting, sexually abusing his stepdaughter. Uh, you know, the, the, I'll spare you the horrifying details that came out in the court documents, but you would think that a, a child abuser, a sex pervert, would uh, would not be who you would want to lead your organization if you're going to allegedly defend the civil rights of people. Um, but of course, that's not what the SPLC is really about. Uh, then the president of the SPLC. Richard Cohen actually had to step down. The uh, SPLC legal director, Rhonda Brownstein, also left the SPLC under a cloud of scandal. And, um, you know, according to news reports, this all happened because the leadership was mistreating, quote unquote, people of color. Uh, so the organization allegedly defending people of color ends up being a giant scam. And, you know, to be fair, left wing groups have been trying to warn about this for a long time. 
newspapers have been sounding the alarm about this scam. Um, but now, you know, it, it really is all imploding. Uh, some other examples of the SPLC's insanity. Very recently, they had to pay out millions of dollars to a Muslim because they labeled him, hang on to your hats, a, one of the top 10 anti-Muslim extremists. So according to the SPLC, a Muslim is one of the world's top 10 anti-Muslim extremists. So they ended up having to apologize for that. You know, talk about ridiculous. Uh, they smeared a prominent black law professor as an enabler of white supremacy. Uh, they called actually, a woman who I know personally, who's a, a Cherokee Indian married to a direct descendant of Sacagawea. Uh, they referred to her, Elaine Willman, as the matriarch of the anti-Indian movement. And uh, in this hit piece where they smeared an Indian married to an Indian as the leader of the anti-Indian movement, uh, they claimed that American Indians were weak and they, they just recycle and regurgitate all these disgusting stereotypes and racist uh, perceptions of Indians as if they were true, right? It, treating Indians as if they were these weak, uh, helpless creatures that need the, the scam group uh, SPLC to come in and rescue them. Uh, they also labeled Ben Carson, right? The uh, the uh, very, very prominent American, um, the, the uh, brain surgeon who now serves in the Trump administration, uh, leading the Department of Housing and Urban Development, they smeared him as an extremist because he still believes in marriage. They also regularly target the John Birch Society, which is affiliated with the New American Magazine, which produces this show, uh, as a uh, patriot group. And in SPLC cuckoo land, uh, patriot means something bad. Uh, they define patriot group as anti-government. Of course, the John Birch Society is not anti-government. Uh, in fact, the John Birch Society is very much pro-government and regularly warns about the dangers of anarchism and no government. So uh, really, you know, they just make stuff up uh, to respond to this. The law enforcement intelligence bulletin or the law enforcement intelligence brief, which is a uh, an intelligence digest that I, I happen to write for. Uh, it's produced by the Law Enforcement Charitable Foundation, uh, has been sending out this uh, digest to every police chief and sheriff across the entire country. And one of the things that has happened in this intelligence brief is the exposing of the SPLC. And I wrote one of these articles focused in on Bill Ayers. The SPLC uh, ran an interview with Bill Ayers and celebrated him as this anti-war activist, this guy deserving of our adulation. What they didn't tell you was that Bill Ayers is actually a communist terrorist, founder of a communist terrorist group that was being directed by the Soviet puppet regime in Cuba murdered police officers, blew up uh, the funeral of a police officer, bombed the Pentagon, bombed the Capitol, bombed the State Department, uh, a very nasty, nasty group. Uh, the FBI agent who infiltrated the leadership of this terror organization, Larry Grathwall, uh, mentioned that uh, he had a discussion with them and said, so what are we going to do once we overthrow the government and we bring in the Soviets and the Chinese and the North Koreans and the Vietnamese to help occupy America? What are we going to do with all those people who you know, refuse to adapt to this new way of thinking? They said, oh, well, we're going to put them in re-education camps. We're going to have to put tens of millions of Americans into re-education camps. And then, well, what about the ones who can't be re-educated, right? The, the diehard capitalists that we can't successfully brainwash. And they said, well, those we're going to have to liquidate, right? So um, the SPLC loves a cop killing terror group that was planning on liquidating millions and millions of Americans as part of a communist revolution. Uh, nice company to keep, right? Uh, you would think that any law enforcement agency in the country that still had ties with this fringe wacko group ought to be investigated. And, um, you know, if there's evidence of a conspiracy, potentially even, uh, you know, brought into court, because this is serious stuff. These are not the type of people who should be uh, having anything to do with our brave uh, law enforcement officers, our law enforcement leaders. It's highly inappropriate. Uh, Jeff Sessions did the right thing by severing all ties with this group. And uh, any remaining local law enforcement agencies that are still working with this group uh, need to reexamine that right away. Uh, finally, you know, back to the big technology companies, the fact that Google and YouTube and Facebook and all these crazy groups think that it's appropriate to work with a hate group like the SPLC, bigots against Christianity, uh, racist, discriminatory in their own office building, uh, really ought to send up some red flags. You know, we, we've known for a long time the big technology companies were dominated by fringe far left ideologues. The fact that they're working with the SPLC confirms that yet again. Um, it's time, you know, with all all these scandals with all these revelations that have come out about the SPLC 
it's time for any organization, any media organization, any law enforcement group, any uh, technology company that continues to have a relationship with this hate group to be uh, shunned, to be exposed, and to be opposed. Uh, I mean, the SPLC should be as politically toxic as the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, they are dangerous. They are racist. They are a hate group. Uh, they inspired a terrorist to go and uh, try to massacre conservatives. Uh, this is nothing to joke around about anymore. This is serious business. Uh, I'm Alex Newman. This is Behind the Deep State. Make sure you go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, share, and make sure you go to our website, thenewamerican.com. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. Until next week, this is Behind the Deep State with Alex Newman. Thank you very much and God bless.